There's new research on a treatment for depression that involves, or rather that revolves around... Lucinogenic drug, which is found in magic mushrooms... ...could be a game-changer in the treatment of some forms of mental health issues. One in three reported a significant reduction in their depression over Even three weeks. Even when I stopped drinking, I was miserable. I wanted to drink, and when I was drinking, I didn't want to drink. So, and those were the only two worlds that I knew. Well, a woman with terminal cancer is going public today, saying Health Canada is preventing her from accessing a drug that can make her remaining time more enjoyable. Janice Hughes thought she could get an exemption too. She has stage four breast cancer and has been given two years to live. Uh, I, my name is Janice Hughes. I'm a stage four breast cancer patient. And very soon after my diagnosis, I learned about the potential of psilocybin to relieve the end of life anxiety that I was experiencing. And I learned about this organization called Therosil that was helping people access uh, permission from Health Canada to access psilocybin. So I went that route. I was denied access by Health Canada, who wanted me to pursue other pathways. And of my three care providers, there was not one that was willing to participate in this process. Being rejected for a Section 56 exemption and now the delay and the reconsideration, I feel like Health Canada would prefer that I take my life. I mean, for people like me who are facing end of life, well, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't afford to wait. I, I, I'm not going to sacrifice myself to the government's agenda, whatever that may be. Whatever their agenda is, it's not putting me, citizen, first and foremost. <laughs> My sleepless night the other night, I was actually thinking of Justin Trudeau. I'm a child of the 70s. I totally, I bought into Pierre Trudeau's vision of a bilingual country. I did the second language learning thing. I was a participant in the first year of Katimovic, the national youth program that was both a community service program and a second language learning program. I eventually worked for the organization for three years, but in between, I was inspired enough by my academic experience that I went to Laval as an adult and learned French by studying in French all of my favorite subjects. And then I ended up as a translator helping to fulfill Manitoba's constitutional language requirements and ensuring that Francophones in Manitoba had access to their first language in the courts. So my whole life has been a fulfillment of Pierre Trudeau's dream for this country. I embraced that vision. I do not feel embraced by Trudeau, Justin Trudeau's government. I feel like I'm a non-entity. I feel like it does not care that I was suffering from end-of-life distress. I don't know what it thinks about me defying the law, but I don't care what it thinks about me defying the law. I did what I had to do for my own self-preservation. It has enhanced my life immeasurably. Everybody who I care about and cares about me sees the difference, rejoices in the difference. And some of them say, I want some of that. <laughs> Thank you.
I know you like that. You guys abuse that. We need it. We need it. We need, we need soft hearts right now. We do need soft hearts right now. I mean, at all of these events, it's just so exciting to see the people that are in this movement that I had no idea about. There's stuff happening everywhere, in the universities, out there at the treatment end, politicians now showing interest, and uh, just members of the general public who are motivated to come out. And then last night, there was a woman uh, who happened to be sitting next to me at one point, and we struck up a conversation. At the end of the evening, she came back to me, and she said, I think you may have saved my life, which was pretty powerful. I'm very grateful f to organizations like Therasol that are helping, helping educate me and give me a voice and uh, all of the medical professionals that are supportive, all of the patients that are going above and beyond to fight this fight. It's like, it's great to feel part of a community. I do feel like I'm part of a wave that is building. My name is Spencer Hawkswell. I am the president and CEO at Therasil. So we came here to meet with the Minister of Health. A complete success would have been us sitting down at the table with Jeanette de Clos and Caroline Bennett and saying, you know, what's going on here, right? Why is our government afraid to help Canadians? Why are they afraid to put forward policies that will positively impact patients and healthcare practitioners? That could happen this week. It could happen today. But unfortunately, for the second time, uh, after you know spending thousands and thousands of dollars flying patients and doctors out from across Canada, they completely ignored us. Didn't even respond to an email this time. And we send an email almost every single day, begging for access, begging for a single conversation with them. So we thought that we'd bring the fight to them. What does the sign say and, and what are you doing at this protest here? Uh, well, I'm just advocating for doctors to be the ones who choose when and whether and at what stage in their treatment plan that they access psilocybin. And, and what was the motion hearing for? This was in Hartle et al. It's, it's our charter challenge to strike down just this unworkable system. Yeah, this is really important because these medicines have the potential to help many people with many different conditions. Well, psilocybin has uh, affected my life and my children's life uh, tremendously. Uh, all four of my adult children have used some form of psilocybin in their therapies. Uh, my one daughter has a very rare form of migraines called hemiplegic migraines and has tried to get on them through her doctor and refused. She's been on every single kind of medicine you can think for major migraines that have all tremendously bad effects and mushrooms are the only thing that have worked for her and she's still being refused. Um, I'm an alcoholic, a low bottom alcoholic in recovery and uh, it took me eight years to get put together any sobriety. Um, but when I did, in my sobriety off the bottle, I reached out to psychedelics to do the me work that was kind of obfuscated from me when I was in recovery. So when you enter recovery, or when you go to an AA meeting, a lot of guys talk about the work. You got to do the work. Absolutely. But it's kind of a amorphous kind of concept. What is the work? What, and so some guys will have, some uh, sponsors will have some work to give you, some actual pages of paper. Other ones will talk very kind of non non specifically about what you have to do for yourself. Inside. Right? Inside. This new self-directed neuroscience is really giving us some insights, though. So if I have the same thought pattern over and over and over again, and it leads me to the bottle over and over and over again, I need to destroy those, those link-ups in my brain, which um, you used to think that the brain built to a certain extent and then fell apart over age, but we're learning that's not true at all. I mean, someone who pans for gold will notice the reflection of the fish, will notice the reflection of the waves, will notice more reflection. Yeah. And in a similar way, when you do the work, which psilocybin facilitates, like I, I've made a couple 
little bits of the work that I remember being significant and set them aside for friends in recovery. But psilocybin forces you. Psilocybin, just strap in and we're gonna detach all your sense of self and being insulted and being wounded or whatever it may be for you. And we're gonna kind of give you a blank slate. And you actually wake up from a good psilocybin session and then nap uh, thinking, I've, I've got a chance at this. And that is something that is missing in early recovery. Where downtown Ottawa, a lot of the old boys get hit hard. They go to they go to addiction recovery as a matter of course, not because they think they're going to get sober. Yeah. And if you give them that fresh battlefield sense, you might actually say a little bit of the work to do, a little bit of that soul entheogen inspiration that I can't bottle for yeah. you. If I could, I'd bottle it and sell it. But it grows out of the ground, and that's what they call entheogens. And so, Therasil wants to make some inroads in that and help the site the doctors understand the substances that we're asking them to use i think that's brilliant yeah i mean it's so nice uh all of this work that we do with people from across canada doctors patients being able to get in one room uh and actually hang out with each other and enjoy a meal and and have some laughs it was it was really nice and a perfect time to strategize about you know what the week would be like how we would approach the public meeting, the um, press conference with Elizabeth and Alistair. The press conference was um, was interesting. I mean, just I've never attended a press conference before, so it was just interesting to me. <laughs> just the layout of the place and how the whole thing was conducted. Elizabeth had told us that I think that generally they like they're pretty strict about timelines and so we had a general framework of how long we were supposed to talk. I probably ran over because that is my habit. All of the solutions we have currently for mental health address the symptoms. Psilocybin gets at the root causes. I have to say I got quite passionate at one point. And this is revolutionary. I do believe that it's going to thoroughly upend psychiatry as it's currently practice and here we every day I see Minister Bennett publishing on Instagram messages about mental health and the dire need in mental health and I just want to scream at her psilocybin it's here it's in front of you let's look at it and uh, I don't know why the message is getting through to Health Canada I think they must be hearing some of this and reading some of the same people and if you want to know who I think our opposition is in looking at psilocybin, big pharma. If there's a cure for depression, it shuts off a market for some very profitable products. Um, SSRIs, people who are, you know, there are a wide range, Prozac, uh, the pill pushers in this country, there are four drug salesmen for every doctor. I think we need to take our blinders off in terms of where there are entrenched interests that would not want to see people having access, especially if it works. That's what we're asking for. We're asking for we as clinicians having access for our patients. Oh, Val, those are sweet. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, you know, you do that, that, that thing, um, I don't know, you wonder, like, <laughs> sort of, I don't know, wondering whether any of your privacy has leaked out onto the internet, and so you Google your name, and they, like, I've been quite reassured in the past that I was not, I did not have an internet presence, but now I do. But it's for a really positive thing, something that I can be proud of and that will endure, be, endure after I'm gone. <laughs> I'm making a mark. Pretty exciting.
Thank you so much for watching this movie. My name is John and I work at Theraso. You can support patients like Janice get legal, regulated access to psilocybin, a proven, effective, and safe method to treat a myriad of mental health conditions by heading to theracil.ca or emailing your local member of parliament to tell them that you believe that psilocybin should be medically available. Thank you again for watching the movie and we really hope to see you in our community very soon. Thank you.